I have presented four harmonizations of our Quran. In my prelude, I followed Turk's instructions, but with a 17th century twist. I played the chorale melody with the pedal nachton two foot stop in the top voice. Choral improvisations require harmonizing the melody in any voice, as you just heard. Johann Kirnberger described this technique at the end of the 18th century. Quote, the main melodic line, or cantus firmus, can be placed in any voice. However, when it's placed in the pedal, as you heard in the last variation, um, one must be careful that it conclude with cadences that belong to the main key." End quote. Another typical form of the choral prelude is the bicinium. A bicinium is a two-part choral variation that consists of a florid contrapuntal line and an augmented choral melody or cantus firmus. Improvising a bicinium requires three essential techniques, augmentation, species counterpoint, and diminutions. In the augmented cantus firmus section, species counterpoint governs the relationship between the melody and the accompaniment. I will now accompany our choral melody um, with pure species counterpoint, what I call elaborazione. In my improvisation, the elaboratio flame framework um, is expanded and embellished with diminutions or figuren in my next improvisation. Melodic ornamentation together with augmentation are the most important generating principles in choral based improvisations. I will now play the same elaboratio framework with augmentation connected with florid decorative patterns. In the 17th century Figurenlehre, the study of figures was mainly focused on figuration and elocutio, the art of delivery. On your handout, you can see two examples from 17th century diminution treatises that are pre preoccupied with the embellishments of choral uh, melodic intervals. Many 18th century composers, such as Georg Böhm and Johann Pachelbel, use these embellishments in their choral partitas. On your handout also you can see a melodic embellishment by Georg Böhm in his partita Ach wie nichtig, ach wie füstig. So far I have talked about how to embellish the two-voice contrapuntal skeleton of a choral melodies, of choral melodies in a bicinium. 
Now I will explain how this can be expanded into multi-voice structures and developed into larger musical forms or dispositiones. Choral-based forms often contain sections called for imitationen or ritornelli. These sections use a fragment of the choral melody as a motto, a motto, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, often rounded up with a sequence and a cadence. I will now improvise a harmonically closed one-voiced ritornello that uses the opening phrase of our chorale. Ritornello sections also expand the space between the choral phrases and can be developed independently into multi-voice structures. In a choral trio, for example, the ritornello itself consists of a two or three voice structure. I now will improvise a choral trio. Listen how the opening ritornello... Um, actually, <coughs> I will now improvise a choral trio. Listen how the opening ritornello modulates to the dominant right before the entrance of the second voice. The subsequent entrance of the cantus firmus will alternate between both hands and the pedal. I have so far dem demonstrated how um, form or dispositio can be expanded with ritornelli. In my next improvisation, I will expand dispositio with points of imitation sections. I have stolen the dispositio and decoratio framework of one of Matthias Beckmann's variation on Es ist das Heil. I'm smiling because he, he just played it for for its uh, recital. This variation opens with an imitational section in the treble voices, followed by the entrance of an ornate bass played in the left hand with a 16-foot reed. The chorale melody is then intoned in the tenor range played on the trumpet in the pedal.
just heard, invertible voicing leads to the discovery of new harmonizations and voice leading patterns. The organist can highlight the melody in the bass or in any of the inner voices. We have also seen that augmentation and diminution are crucial techniques that together shape musical form, dispositio, counterpoint and harmony, elaboratio, and musical surface, decoratio. In more advanced choral based genres, decoratio embellishes the melody and the inner voices, such as we heard in the choral trio and in the Beckman type improvisation. For my final improvisation, I will now do a choral fantasy in the 17th century style in five voices. You will hear different levels of augmentation of each choral phrase, the long, longest one being in the tenor voice played with my right foot in a double pedal setting. The other voices will consist of free counterpoint, imitation, and diminutions. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude for the friends and composers who have inspired me to improvise because Baroque improvisation has deepened my understanding of and creation of music in a unique way. And I hope that you can experience the great joy of improvisation by learning it yourself, or at least learning more about this skill that was, so, that was practiced by so many of the great composers.